Hello and welcome to my channel for the victims. Here I will be discussing current affairs, cold cases, missing people, and long forgotten victims. Now, before I go on, please, it would mean the world to me if you could hit the subscribe button and the little bell to be notified of my current videos. I'm hoping to put out one to two videos a week. Today, I wanna to talk about a young child and the sick, twisted abuse of this cycle, cycle of abuse of this family and how the system failed him. I wanna talk about Jeffrey Baldwin. Jeffrey was born November 20th, 1997 in Toronto, Canada. Now, he was born to Yvonne Kitman and Richard Baldwin. Catholic Aid Society was notified of some abuse, so they took custody of the children and gave them custody to the grandparents. It was Jeffrey and three of his siblings. Now, the grandparents, Elver and Norman Kitman, had a criminal record and not one person looked at that file. They were accused of abusing their own children, little Jeffrey's mom and her sister. Their baby at four months old died of a ammonia, but had numerous broken bones. And you know what they got? They received two years probation how, like, does that even make sense? Like, that just blows my mind. Okay, so back to the abuse. Once again, nobody checked and seen that they had a criminal background, both of them. So, the children were given to the grandparents Nobody checked on them. In 2000, there was a bruise under Jeffrey's eye and it was just dismissed as an accident. In 2002, at the age of five years old, Jeffrey was so abused and so malnourished that he couldn't walk anymore. He was kept in a cold bedroom, upstairs, locked in, sometimes with his sibling, his sister. At the time of death, Jeffrey weighed 21 pounds, 21 pounds. That was how much he weighed, a pound less than he was at one years old. He was only three foot because being starved to death, he was the size of a two-year-old. Jeffrey and his sister were not allowed to eat. They were not allowed to use facilities, but yet when they have the bathroom facilities, but when they did go to the bathroom, on their mattress, on the floor, they were beaten. They were forced to eat their own vomit. They had to drink out of a toilet bowl. Poor little Jeffrey had numerous raw, crusty rashes all over his legs from being so Dirty. Okay. Now. There were six adults. Six adults in that household. And not one reported the abuse. One of the men that lived there said he didn't want to report it because he didn't want to lose his free roof over his head. He didn't want to lose his room. Can you believe that? 
He didn't want to be kicked out of the house. So Jeffrey meant nothing to him. The day that he died, he was wrapped in a towel and put on the counter when they called 911, which I'm shocked they called. In the past, she didn't want anybody to call for help because she didn't want to lose a $600 check she was receiving for each child. Like, I, I can't even begin to get into the mind of these people. When Jeffrey was taken to the hospital, no one went with him. No grandparents and no adults. He went alone and he died alone. But I'm not surprised about that. Okay, now, 2002, Jeffrey died of septics. They think little Jeffrey put his fingers in his mouth and some of the feces got into his bloodstream. He died, well, a couple of days before he died, he developed ammonia, he couldn't breathe. And they think they, he put his fingers in his mouth and the feces got into his bloodstream and he got septic shock. One of the great adults that lived there said that the night before he died, he was crying to himself, just like in that much pain. I can't imagine with this little boy, like to hurt children, it's unreal. Okay, when Yvonne, Jeffrey's mother, found out he died, she wanted to know if she's still eligible for the $50,000 life insurance policy. I'm not even going to comment about that. Like, I, I, oh my gosh, I don't even know. The pod, okay. Both grandparents were arrested. The pathologist, Dr. Gregory Wilson, reported. At the time of death, Jeffrey didn't even have one inch body fat on his body. Not even an inch. Like, let that sink in. Like, he said that his legs and his arms looked like sticks. Both were found guilty of second degree murder and forcible confinement for his sister. And they both got life with no possibility of parole. Thank you, God, for the justice. But though it does not bring little Jeffrey back, and the years and years of therapy, those other children, those siblings, must have had to go through. On the good note, though, the siblings did get the help they needed. They were given to a very good family. They graduated high school, and I think one of them now is in college. But. Uh, this is just horrible. 
354 Woodfield Road in Toronto, Canada is the house, House of Horrors, shown in the picture, is where Jeffrey was held in that cold bedroom. And the peeling of the paint, he was so hungry that he ate some plaster to survive. Uh, very, very sick. What kills me the most are these cases of children abuse. Like, those are the hardest cases to comprehend. Okay, thank you for joining me. Until the next video. Thank you.